Uh, my name is Neil Gillespie. I'm a fish biologist with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Uh, Carter Bill Quick, so down in Southern Minnesota. Uh, and I'm going to be talking today about adaptive electric fishing for Asian carp, or maybe aggressive electric fishing for Asian carp, uh, and whatever you want to look at it. Ah, all right. So probably everyone's familiar with the uh, long-term resource monitoring program. Uh, it's kind of a, a standard, it gives you a standardized uh, way of electrofishing. Um, and so everyone has probably seen this sort of, you know, shocking into shore slowly, moving back, shocking into shore, moving back. Um, which works well if you're looking for, you know, community information. Same thing in backwaters, you know, just kind of the standardized, slow, shocking maneuver that everyone is familiar with. Um, but again, this is for monitoring resource change, so you're looking for all species, not specifically targeting Asian carp, because we all know Asian carp are uh, very good at avoiding electrical fields. They're super sensitive. Um, so this method, generally you find lower catch rates for Asian carp. Uh, a lot of times they're out of the area before you can get close to them. Um, so there's a study that came out, uh, at all, um, which looked at this idea of um, refining electric fishing to target Asian carp. Um, and so you've got your, your standard protocols on the left there, and on the right you've got the experimental protocols, um, which generally is a little bit faster moving. Um, you look at the, the shoreline distance, uh, you've got 200 meters versus 400 meters, so it's faster. Um, even though the time is the same uh, length. Um, but you've also got um, variation in pedal operation. So, you know, when you're, you're actually putting electricity into the water um, and then when you're not. So, you know, quickly moving into shore, applying electricity, shutting it off, moving back out, applying electricity, moving into the shore again, applying electricity. So it's off and on to kind of catch these fish off, off guard. So just from this study, they collected uh, almost 1,200 Asian carp, with 71% of those being captured through that experimental design. Uh, CQE was two and, almost two and a half times greater uh, with the experimental design over the standardized uh, method. Uh, and so they, they contributed this partially to uh, reduce evasion just from this aggressive boat driving, um, but also the greater length of shoreline that they covered in that same amount of time because they were moving much quicker. Uh, so one thing that we use along with that sort of uh, you know, variation of pedal operation and, and uh, you know, a little bit of faster movement is we use side scan sonar a lot. In most boats, uh, most of your, your head units today have those. Um, Hummingbird and uh, Lorance are you know, pretty much every newer system that comes out has this. Um, you do have to have a compatible head unit and transducer. Um, but if you have this and you aren't using it, definitely something you need to be looking at. Um, this can help you locate Asian carp. So Asian carp are a lot like dolphins in that they seem to follow the boats. So you get these long streaks um, that just sort of follow along with the boat. Um, and that's generally how you can ID these carp over something else that just kind of is sitting Bottom, not really moving. Um, so that's what we're looking for when we're shopping. A lot of times we'll have the electricity off or you know have the person on the front chain off the pedal. And we're just moving, just looking for these fish. Uh, again, larger streaks, which indicates usually Asian carp, um, and then pods of fish. So Asian carp seem to school up, um, and so you get lots of these long streaks all together. It's a good chance you've got several Asian carp all together all moving along with the boat. Um, and it's also super helpful for setting yellow nets and travel nets, especially if you don't like pulling these things out of trees um, off the bottom. So it's got multiple, they've got multiple uses. If you don't have side scan on your head units, it's a good idea to look into it and try to get them. Um, it doesn't have to be a very expensive unit. You know, the newer units now, the Hummingbird Helix 12s or Helix 10s or whatever, set you back you know, a couple thousand dollars. Um, but the, even the older units, uh, this is like a 690 or something, so not super expensive or very big even, uh, but you can still see pretty good detail. So, something to look into. And then once you find these fish, you know, there's a couple there. Um, if they're following along with the boat, a lot of times you can, you can rip out in front of them and uh, apply electricity and catch them off guard. 
So moving kind of in a slow path, watching your side scan, um, and then once you see those fish, whatever side of the boat, so either on the left side or the right side, you can then jet forward a little bit faster, apply electricity, and a lot of times catch those fish off guard. Um, you're not necessarily going to immobilize them, a lot of times that just gets them to jump, but if you have more experienced netters, more experienced boat driver, a lot of times that's enough to get two or three, you know, and in lower density areas or areas where there's a lot of area where the fish can move, um, a lot of times just doing this over and over, you can load up your boat fairly quickly. So, biggest thing is, uh, you know, making sure that your netters up front are prepared for when you do these sort of quicker maneuvers, because uh, obviously anytime you're jetting forward, you're going to be throwing your, your netters back, so making sure that they know they need to be hanging on, um, and, you know, being careful. A lot of communication is super important, making sure that they know what you're doing, um, you know, and then once you once you get those fish jump, and, you know, making sure that they're prepared for that. So some other successful techniques, um, combining aggressive electric fishing with Asian carp hotspots, um, so in the Ohio River and in the tributaries, it is a bathtub. We don't have a lot of bathtub change, so a lot of times we do see in the structure. Um, so we're generally hitting those areas pretty heavily, and we do see them pretty well. Um, if you're on somewhere like the Mississippi River, or you know even out here, uh, where you do have some random drop-offs, a lot of times those will work out pretty well. Uh, behind current breaks. Um, you know, again, on the Mississippi or anywhere where you've got wing dams or wing dice, um, you're going to get a lot of fish stacking up, and so that's a great place to hit. Um, but also up on the shallow shells, so that's something that, um, you know, in Lake Park that we've, we've done pretty well on, is herding fish up onto these shells, um, where your electricity is going to be more effective, because um, you've got less water for that electricity to actually go through. Um, and then, it's, you know, the fish are, are more likely to jump, you're more likely to actually be able to catch them. Um, and then, just something sort of anecdotally, but up on those shallow mud uh, shelves, when you're kind of kicking up some of those, some of the mud and creating kind of that, that mud and that almost, um, it seems like fish will hit that and jump. Like it throws them off. So something to be aware of, you can almost create a mud net that will kind of contain them in an area and it'll be able to shock them. It's not going to hold them for very long, but it might be long enough for you to get several in the boat. Um, and so there's, you know, dolphins sometimes do this to, to hurt fish, and so we've had some success with it. I just noticed that whenever you're doing this, too, the, a lot of times you don't even the mud up, just your bubble trail. Yeah, you know? yep, yep. Just any, anything that just, you know, not clean water, it throws them off. So it's, it works out. Um, obviously, using a combination with gale and trammel nets, that's almost exclusively how we catch them, is setting gale nets and then either pushing them into, uh, into those nets and then also catching them out in the air works out really well. Uh, but then also adjusting your your, your box settings. Um, so we're usually using a 60 hertz and a 40 50 duty cycle, um, pulse DC, but everyone finds you know, something different that works for them. Um, but just playing with that, finding what works best. Um, and then increasing or decreasing power. So, um, you know, if you're not rolling them, maybe try increasing, but you know, if you're trying to keep them alive to tag or whatever else, you know, you might want decrease that so you're not injuring them, so playing with that you might get some better better results. Finally, the biggest thing is just to be adaptive. Don't stick to one thing if it's not working. You know, just like all fishermen know, if you're throwing, you know, some color of blue or it's not working, you got to switch up. Um, you know, be prepared to catch the fish out of the air. A lot of times you're not going to immobilize them. You might, you know, catch them in the electric field for one second and they go back under as they're jumping out. So being prepared to catch them out of the air. Um, new locations and areas you may not expect them. So we were down at a, a, a old Oxbow Lake in Southern Illinois uh, last week. And every time we've been there, we usually catch them up in some cypress trees. So we'll get up in there and shot through there and we usually do really well. But the water was up and we weren't catching them back in there. We actually found them just out kind of in the middle channel where there was no structure or anything. Um, and that's not where we usually find it. So it's just kind of, you know, having to explore different options and find something that works for those environmental conditions at that time. Um, so don't get too caught up in, in something that worked at one point because it may not work again or it may not work in this new situation. 
Um, multiple electric fishing boats in concert, running one right next to another, or one slightly behind another. As you get fish escaping one electric field, they run into another electric field, um, and you might be able to either immobilize or catch those fish as they're jumping. You know, anybody who's been out electric fishing Asian Park, a lot of times it seems like a bunch of them are jumping off here in the back of the boat. Having another electric fishing boat back there to collect those stragglers and pick them up, um, you know, usually works pretty well. The only thing is safety, making sure that you guys are watching each other, not getting too close, or you could have a problem with, you know, electrocuting each other. Um, adjusting your speed of maneuvering. So again, this is kind of with using the side scan and getting out in front of those fish. Sometimes getting up, you know, a little bit faster, so your booms come out of the water, you reduce electricity in the water, and then stopping, you know, it's just like stepping off the pedal, but kind of using the boat to do that, catching these fish off guard. Um, you know, fast deceleration we found works out pretty well. So getting up, just you know, kind of going a little faster and then stopping and throwing it in reverse. You know, creating a lot of noise with that motor once you go into reverse, a lot of times gets, to, gets them to jump and you're able to catch them out of the air. So just trying some different things. And again, if you aren't catching fish, start experimenting. So you never know what you might find that works. Um, and you know, different areas that you fish will have different things that are effective. So. Again, don't get too caught up in what used to work or was working at one point um, and that isn't working now. So, kind of short, but I got, got the point across. Any questions for me or just discussion on the, on the topic?